All right. You are highly welcome in this lesson. And as I promised that we are going to be recording uh, chemical kinetics until this topic gets done. So I'm amazing we are coming you to it. So now we are going to look at chemical kinetics. When we say chemical kinetics, the main important word to put into consideration is kinetics. Kinetic, from kinetic. If we say kinetic energy, energy possessed by bodies which are moving. When we say chemical kinetics, we are looking at how fast or slow the reactions proceed. Like we are looking at, um, we are looking at basically the, the, the study of rates of reactions and the factors affecting the rates of reactions. So if someone says chemical kinetics, this one will strictly deal with the study of the rates of reactions and factors that affect the rate of reactions. But you may ask yourself, what is rate of reaction itself? A rate of reaction, one can define it as the change in concentration of one of the products or the reactants. Or one can bring it out as the decrease in concentration of reactants or increase in the products formed per unit time. In other words, the main important statements that we are looking at, we are looking at chemical kinetics. Uh, which we have said that uh, is the study of rates of the chemical reactions and the factors affecting them. Factors that affect the rate of reaction. Start of, of rates of chemical reactions and factors affecting them. Factors affecting those rates of chemical reactions. But one may be interested in knowing what a rate of reaction is. What is the rate of reaction itself? Rate of reaction, we are looking at uh, it as the decrease in concentration of the reactants, all right, all increase in the concentration of products formed. I'm going to consider a case whereby if I consider the equation x plus y is equals z, plus maybe W, I'm having this chemical reaction. Uh, this reaction of X plus Y is giving me Z. What does it mean? Remember from the definition, we are saying that, uh, let me say consider this reaction, X plus Y giving us Z plus W, but remember, we say that the rate of a chemical reaction, we say that the rate of a chemical reaction is equal to change in concentration of reactants, change in concentration 
of reactants divided by divided by time interval or divided by the time time interval implying that all one can one can bring it out in terms of uh chain concentration of reactants these were reactants or one can bring it out in terms of products we can say rate of reaction is equals to change in concentration of one of the product divided by time still. Now, uh, this one brings us an idea that when you're looking at a chemical reaction, identify which reactant, or identify which one of the species is a reactant or a reactants, and then which ones are products. And then from that point, you can easily find the rate of reaction. For example, when you look at reactants, I'm going to summarize it from down here. For the case of reactants, when we say rate of reaction, it is going to be equal to, we have said change in the concentration of reactants. So you can look at any of the reactants, for example, X, and you say change in concentration of X, these square brackets represent X out of time interval dt. But remember, products decrease, the concentration of products decrease. So we output a negative here. Or one can say negative d, concentration of y over dt. That in both cases, the concentration of the reactants keep decreasing. Concentration of X was decreasing, concentration of Y was decreasing because products get used, they get used up. But because we form products, because we form products now for the case of the products, remember our products are Z and W. So for the case of the products, products will be uh, increasing and therefore for them, the rate of reaction is positive. So for products, We shall have our rate of reaction as equal to remember it was Z. So we shall have D, concentration of Z out of. Um, let me see, is it really what we had? Is it what we really had? We have X, Y, Z, W. We have X, Y, Z, W. So we shall have a concentration of Z and W, okay? So we shall have that for products, the rate of reaction will be according to Z, T, or W, D, T. The change in formation of products is positive. The change in also formation of this product 
is a positive. Now, you need to know uh, you have to be always specific with which species you have used when expressing the rate of a chemical reaction. So this equation, the equations will always be looked at as a, a fundamental tool when expressing the species in terms of rate of reaction, because you want to see is it the product or it's the reactant that you are considering. Then, um, if we are to remind ourselves of the units of rate of reactions, the units of rate of a chemical reaction, remember, we have said that uh, the rate of a chemical reaction basically is equal to concentration of time over time because we are looking at the change in concentrations over time. So one can say we are considering those units of concentration. It can be given in grams per liter, it can be given in moles per liter, it can given in, be given in moles per decimeter cubed over units of time, depending on what units you are having. So for example, if units of concentration is moles per decimeter cubed, and the ones of time are second, so here the units can end up becoming moles per decimeter cubed per second when the S moves up. Else, if you're given grams per liter, and maybe over time, here the concentration will be grams per liter per second. So we need to mind about uh, which units of concentration are, are being given. But because that in any case we divide by time, it has to be over seconds. Then um, from here, we are going to look at uh, the common terms that we consider. We're going to specifically look at the common terms that we consider when we are dealing with the chemical kinetics. And among us, these chemical terms, um, we are having very many of them, but we are going to consider the ones which are within our scope. And then we define and we see how applicable they are in this topic that we are handling. So in all the cases, in all the cases, we are going to look at uh, rate law. Let me say common terms used so that we summarize them and uh, we see how to get these things out. So we've got what we call the rate law. Rate law. Now, when we say rate law, there is no word that is uh, new now. Law, you know law. When we say law, it means that it is some restriction put rate. So a restriction put on the rate of a chemical reaction. So when we say rate law, uh, we are, it's like we are stating something. This rate law will already summarize the relationship between the rate of a chemical reaction and the concentration of the reactants. Okay, so when we say rate law, look at a summary of the relation of the uh, of the relationship between uh, the rate of a chemical reaction and then the concentration. So the rate law of any chemical reaction will be stating as to be stating that for uh, uh, we shall be saying that uh, the rate of a chemical reaction, the rate of a chemical reaction at a constant temperature, all right, or at a given temperature, okay, at a given temperature,
the rate of a chemical reaction is directly proportional is directly proportional to the molar concentrations to the molar concentrations of the reactants raised to the appropriate powers, raised to the appropriate powers whose values experimentally determined. Simple. The rate of a chemical reaction is directly proportional, is directly proportional to the molar concentration of the reactant raised to the appropriate powers, raised to their appropriate powers. So those the concentrations of the concentration of the products in a chemical reaction would be raised to the appropriate powers according to the uh, stoichiometric equation. Then uh, uh, the values of those powers are determined experimentally and then also from a stoichiometric equation. Now, for example, uh, if we consider Uh, for rate law, I'm going to denote it like this. If we consider the re if you consider chemical reaction, uh, maybe if you consider a chemical reaction of of X, all right. X moles of A reacting with uh, Y moles of B to give you products. Since we're interested in the concentrations of the reactants, then I may not need to know what was formed. Now, here, the rate of reaction I've said that the rate of reaction is directly proportional. That is a proportionate sign to the molar concentration of the reactant. So the reactant is A raised to the appropriate powers. So I can say A to the power X times B to the power Y. And for this case now, to remove the proportionate sign, we bring in a constant of integration, or rather we bring in a, a, a constant, proportionality constant. And from here, we are going to say that rate of reaction is equal to, rate of that reaction would be equaling to, we remove the proportionality sign when we put equal signs and we introduce in a constant K times A, Concentration of A raised to the power X times concentration of B to the power Y. So that is what we are having as our rate law. But the rate law specifically is this, only that here I wanted to bring in equality. Now, this rate law can help us now confirm the rate equation. We can get the rate constant and other 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 things. Now, from here, when we say this was the one term number one, now term number two is what we call the rate equation. And this is the rate equation here. The rate law is still having a proportionality sign, it is an expression, but the rate equation, the rate equation is when you have removed the proportionality sign where you have equality. So this is what we call the rate equation. So when we say the rate equation, 
rate equation expresses the rate of a chemical reaction in terms of concentration of each reactant raised to the appropriate power. In other words, when we say rate of reaction is equals to this, if you write this, now this is the rate equation. Whereby K, K from our rate equation here, this is our rate equation. From our rate equation, K stands for the rate constant. Or one can call it a coefficient of rate of reaction. One can call it rate coefficient. Uh, we have X. X is the order of reaction. X stands for order of reaction with respect to, with respect to, this is the reality, with respect to A. Whereas Y is the order of reaction with respect to B. So that is what we can generate from our rate equation. But then within the rate equation, you are seeing this K. This K is what we call the rate constant. So if we are to define the rate constant, you have to make it the subject of the formula, the subject in this equation. Now, what do we do from that, uh, from the fact that, uh, that rate of equation was equal to concentration of A raised to power X times concentration of B raised to power Y, of course, times K. Now, if we, are, if we need to define the rate constant K, you can say K is equals to, now here, you first bring it out as a subject, so it will be rate over concentration of A raised to the power X times concentration of B raised to the power Y. Now, from here, you can easily define what the rate constant is. And in this case, our rate constant is the ratio of the rate of reaction, okay? Uh, it is the ratio rate constant is the ratio of rate of chemical reaction. I'm getting everything from the from the from the equation rate over this. So it is the ratio of chemical of rate of chemical reaction to the product. of concentration, the product of concentration, right? Of the reactants. Raised to the appropriate powers with the appropriate powers which those which powers are experimentally determined at a given temperature. Now, we have already looked at what uh, rate law is, or how does it state? We've already looked at uh, the rate equation. We've looked at rate constant. But when you are writing the rate equation, we say that these X and Y values, they stand for the order of a chemical reaction. So I want us to define what order is. Order of a chemical reaction or order of reaction. When we say order of reaction, that is the power. So 
the power to which concentration terms are raised. So when we say rate, rather when we say order, order of the reaction, okay, we are looking at that power, the power to which concentration terms are raised is what we call the order of reaction. So power to which concentration terms are raised, the power to which concentration terms are raised in the experimental rate equation, in the experimental rate equation. Now, if you have like a rate of reaction, for example, is equals to K A X B Y. These powers to which these concentration terms are raised, are what we call the order of a chemical reaction. So now, after having known what order is, then we've got what we call overall order. For example, before I go to overall order, you can easily see from this one that if they say uh, X, X is the order of a reaction with respect to A. Why is the order of the reaction with respect to D? because these are powers to which these concentration terms are raised in this rate equation. But when we say overall order, overall order, the word overall from our simple English, we can bring it out as uh, the total, total. So when we say overall, overall order of the reaction, all right, overall order, so the overall order is the sum of those powers, sum of these independent powers. So when you say overall order, we are looking at sum, sum of, uh, sum of the powers, all right? Sum of the powers to which those molar concentration, which molar, concentrations or some of the powers to which concentration terms are raised, to which molar concentrations of reactants are raised. In the experimental rate equation. The experimental rate equation. So for example, for this case, for this rate equation, when we say overall order, the overall order will be the summation of X and Y, all right? So uh, the overall order in this case is X plus Y. Now, after having known all this, we are going to be using uh, uh, different, different ideas to come up with uh, solutions to different problems that involve the calculations. Now, another term that I want us to define is the molecularity, molecularity of a reaction. Molecularity. Molecularity. When we say molecularity, molecularity refers to the total number of species, all right? To the number of species, it can be ions, it can be molecules, it can be atoms. So when we say molecularity, we refer to it as total number of species, which species can be atoms, can be ions, can be molecules. So to the number of species that are involved in the rate determining step. 
in the red, determining step of a reaction. Total number of species, which can be ions, atoms, or molecules involved in the red determining step, especially for those reactions that involve several stages. Now, looking at all this, looking at all this, here comes a different word, rate determining step. What is the rate determining step? Now we need to know what rate determining step is, or one can put the rate limiting step. Now, when we say the rate determining step, Rate determining step is that slowest step, is the slowest step, all right, in a multi step. So, a step in a multi step chemical reaction. Through which Uh, through which reactants are converted to products. Slowest step in a multi step, meaning that uh, these reactions will be involving different stages, all right? But when we say rate determining step, we are referring to that slowest step in those many through which the reactants are converted to products. Now, then we are going to also look at uh, what we call an elementary reaction. When we say elementary reaction, that is a reaction that involves one step path or root from reactants to products. So that reaction, which involve one step, one step path or one step root, all right, from reactants, to the products. So that is what we call an elementary reaction, all right? However, you need to know that uh, those reactions which are not elementary, molecularity may not be equal to the order of reactions as we are going to be seeing, but let's have a comparison. Let's have a comparison between Let's have a comparison between molecularity and the order of reaction. Now, you're going to realize that molecularity is always a whole number. Molecularity is always a whole number. Because remember, we said that it is total number of species total number of species. So it is a whole number, but never zero. It can't be zero. You can't say that the molecularity is zero. It means that that, that that reaction had no species involved in it, which is impossible. So molecularity has never been zero. Now, if we are to compare between molecularity And then the order of reaction, we are going to realize that for the first difference, molecularity only whole numbers, we get only whole numbers and never zero. But for the order of reaction, it can be a fraction.
can be zero or a whole number. It can be any. Can be a fraction, can be zero, or it can be typical a whole number. Then another thing, uh, you need to know that uh, by definition, another difference can be from their definition, total number of species involved in the rate determining step, well as the order that power to which concentration terms are raised. So here one can bring it as number of species involved in the rate determining step, while this one one can bring it as the power to which concentration terms are raised. Also, uh, this one molecularity is determined from a stoichiometric equation, whereas order of reaction is experimentally determined. All right. Another thing is that uh, molecularity can explain or explains the mechanism of a sudden reaction or the mechanisms of reactions, while order of reaction does not tell anything to do with the mechanism of a reaction. So molecularity doesn't tell about a, a mechanism of a reaction, whereas order of reaction can tell us the mechanism or the root of the reaction. We are going to look at that. We are going to look at uh, those mechanisms of the reaction as we proceed, and that will come later after. Okay, we are going to look at that later after. So now, where we are going right now, I want us to look at uh, um, mathematical derivation, mathematical derivations of the orders of the reaction. We've got zero order, first order, and second order. We want to see the derivations of these. But before we go to these derivations, maybe let's define some other term that we shall mean, that we shall meet most importantly. And that term is what we call half-life. Ladies and gentlemen, when we say half-life of a chemical reaction, we are meaning that time taken for the concentration of a reactant to reduce to half its original value. Time taken for the concentration of the reactants to reduce to half its original value. Now, in this particular case, we are going to look at those reactions that fall under zero order, first order, second order, and then we see how we come up with expressions which are going to be very vital in us to determine uh, in us to determine the, the rates of uh, reactions and uh, in order for us to determine uh, other, other factors. Uh, well, okay, 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 okay. Else or else or else or else or else, uh, we can uh, first look at uh, mm -hmm. it's okay. Let's look at mathematical derivations. Let's look at mathematical derivations of zero order, first order, second order rates of reactions, which we are going to, which information we are going to use. All right, we're going to use this information to derive the graphs for these respective rates of reactions or for these respective orders of rates of reactions from which graphs we can determine uh, uh, the rate, all right? These graphs can help us get the rate and other parameters, okay? Because there are different methods of getting, uh, there are different methods of determining the uh, of determining the, the order of reactions. It can be from graphs, it can be from initial rate method, but let's first look at graphical method, which we are going to specifically handle 
which we are going to specifically handle with, uh, uh, which we are going to specifically handle with first deriving these expressions. So let me say derivation. of zero first and second order red equation and the half-life. So, Mathematical determination or mathematical derivation of these orders of reactions. From this point, later after, we are going to, 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 to use this to plot the graphs. You're going to use the derived expressions to plot the graphs. Uh, here, we shall tend to be too mathematical, but we bear with it. All right, now we are going to begin with zero order. And for this session, we are going to specifically look at zero order. Zero order reactions. When we say zero order reactions, what comes into your mind? When we say zero order reactions, we are looking at that reaction where the rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of the reactant. In other words, what you should specifically know about this is that the rate of reaction is independent. Rate of reaction is independent of concentration of the reactants. Rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of the reactant. What do we mean? For example, if you consider a chemical reaction of A forming products, our reactant is A, but we are saying that the rate of a chemical reaction, which is supposed to be K times concentration of A raised to the appropriate power. But since it is independent of the concentration of the reactant, we say it is raised to the power zero. Therefore, the rate of a chemical reaction here is equals to K. Because any number to the power zero mathematics, rather mathematically, any number to the power zero is a K. What does it imply? Now, from here, I want us to derive an integrated form of equation of this, which can always enable us a bring out a graph, all right? It can enable us bring out a graph. Now, uh, I'm going to derive this uh, integrated rate law, integrated rate equation, sorry, and we see. Now, integrated form, of rate equation for first order. No, 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 sorry, for zero order reaction. Now, we need to know that for zero order reaction, we have said that the rate of reaction is equals to K, A raised to the power zero. Implying that rate, is going to be equal to negative because from the rate of, of, of reaction, we say that the change 
in the concentration of reactants, but reactants have to be decreasing. So this negative D concentration of A out of time interval, the change in time, all right? But also it is equal to Ka power zero, implying that this one can be brought in as this one is equal to this also. So we are going to have negative D, all right? Concentration of A out of DT, this is equal to simply K because A power zero is one. Now, if you have this, you can realize that if you cross my prime, be having negative D concentration of A, is equals to k dt. Now, if we take the concentration of A to be A naught when time was zero, okay, at time is equals to zero, concentration of A, I'm going to take it to be concentration of A naught, while uh, at At time t, concentration of A, I'm going to take it to be A t. What does it imply? It implies that if we integrate both sides here, we are going to have negative integral from concentration of A when time was zero times concentration of A when time was t, but we are differentiating d, concentration of A, equaling to k integral from zero, when time was zero, to when time was t of dt. All right. Now, uh, this one, uh, from integration, from integration, this one is going to give us um, from integration here, when we integrate the A, it is going to be negative A, all right? It is going to be negative A, negative concentration of A, but with the limits from uh, A at zero, A, at t. This is going to be equaling to k. When you integrate dt, you get t. So it is kt. All right, it is kt. But from zero also to t. Now, when you look at this, it means that wherever there is a, we shall be putting this respective concentration. So it is going to be negative, all right, negative concentration of A at time T we substitute in these limits minus concentration of A at time zero, all right? It is going to be equaling to K then T minus zero. Now, looking at this, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have uh, concentration of A, at zero minus, because this is negative, if you multiply it inside, this is going to be negative, but this is going to be positive. So it is going to be A naught minus A at time T is equals to K T. Now, if you have this, it means that you are A, concentration of A at time T is going to be equal to A naught minus KT. That is what we are having. So consideration at time T for zero order is given as that. Now from this, we have known how our equation can be, okay? We've known how our equation can be. We shall use this 
expression. You're going to use this expression to plot a graph, and then we see how we determine uh, how we can determine half life, and at the same time, how we can determine uh, the, the, the order of reaction. But let's first leave it at this point. This is the integrated rate equation for the zero order reaction. Now let's look at how about half life. How about half life? Now, for the case of half life, for half life of zero order reaction, it should be noted that still from negative the A out of the T is equals to K. We are still in this. We had said that negative D A is equals to K D T. These are repeating steps of what we have looked at. Now, at, we say that concentration of A not, this is the concentration of A at T is equals to zero. But when we say half life, it means that at half life, half life time taken for initial concentration to reduce to half. Now, at half life, Okay, half life is denoted as T a half. All right, the concentration is going to be a half of this. Concentration is a half, concentration of A naught. Now, when we integrate, when we integrate, we are going to have, we are going to have the integral from, of course, negative from A naught up to A at time T, all right? D concentration of A, I'm bringing this so that we avoid crumb work. This is going to be going to K. Actually, at time T, it will have reduced to a half concentration of A naught. So this is a half concentration of A naught, all right? So this is uh, also integrate from zero up to half-life, T a half, then a dt. Now, when you look at this, it is going to be negative concentration of A with the limits concentration of A naught up to a half, concentration of A naught, because at half-life it will have reduced to half, is equals to KT from zero to T a half. We are trying to bring out the aspect of what half-life is, is equal to. Now, looking at this expression, when you substitute in the limits, this one is going to be negative. We're going to have negative a half, concentration of, this, anyway, this negative is multiplying into everything, so it is negative a half of that, all right? Negative a half of uh, concentration of A naught, then minus, minus is automatic when you're substituting limits, minus negative, so it will make a positive A, not that is what we are having, and this is going to be equal to we substitute here limits, it is going to be k into when you put t as t a half, it is going to be t a half minus zero. So this is going to be a concentration of a naught minus a half concentration of a naught is going to be equal to. K T a half. All right. Now here you can come up with uh, 
the fact that concentration of A naught divided by two, this one is going to be equal to, is going to be equal to KT a half. Because this is A naught minus a half A naught, you get a half A naught. When you have a whole number, you subtract a half. When you have one, you subtract a half, you get a half. So we have A naught minus half A naught, you keep a half A naught, which is equals to KT a half. But we need T a half, half life. So the half life for zero order reaction is going to be equal to, when you divide by K, it's going to be concentration of A naught divided by two K, because we are dividing by K either way. So it is, B, it is going to be two K. Now, that is how we get half life for zero order types of reactions. Now, before I go to giving you the equa the, the, the before I go to giving you the, the graph, how the graph appears to be, we need to know the types or the examples of reactions that undergo first order, those ones that undergo second order, uh, and those ones that undergo zero order. Now, for first order, the types of reactions that undergo zero order is uh, decompositions. Uh, let's outline them here, examples. of zero order reactions. Uh, we have the reactions between the gases. Uh, for example, you can consider the composition of hydrogen iodide, all right? The composition of hydrogen iodide. When we say the composition of hydrogen iodide, you know, it is two hydrogen iodide when it decomposes to form hydrogen and iodine. Now, here the rate of reaction with respect to one of the reactants is zero. For example, when you look at this, we take it to be, to take, we take the, 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 the rate of reaction with respect to hydrogen iodide to be zero, indicating that uh, this reaction has been adsorbed on the surface of the vessel and the rate will only depend on the frequency of collision between the non-adsorbed uh, gas, okay? So uh, you can also look at the composition of ammonia to nitrogen and hydrogen in presence of the hot tungsten wire, right? Um, that is also uh, that the so the reactions of gases, the composition of hydrogen iodide, the composition of uh, ammonia. Then another reaction we look at like uh, iodination, also iodination, iodination. of propanone, that is an organic, an organic reaction whereby we have propanone is a ketone uh, reacts with iodine aqueous and reacts with iodine, it will form CH3, COCH2I and hydrogen iodide. So that is what we have. And for this case, the reaction is zero order with respect to iodine. So these are the one few of the examples amongst which 
we have a zero order reaction. Now, I want to show you how we bring out the graphical aspect for the zero order. We have delivered the form, okay? We have delivered the form and uh, being zero order, now we can easily, we can easily see how the graph is. So let's look at how the graphical concept is delivered. We've said that the differential rate Differential rate equation was negative D concentration of A by DT is equals to K. That was the differential rate equation. But after integrating, after integrating, we got concentration of A at time T equaling to concentration of A at one time was zero minus kt and uh, we got half life as t a half equaling to concentration of a naught divided by 2k now looking at this we can easily interpret this information and then draw a graph okay ah uh, here, we are going to have two graphs delivered for zero order reaction. And the first graph, we shall get it from the, from the rate equation, where we shall have rate as K, which comes from, because it was concentration of K times concentration of A to the power zero, which is the same as K. Now here, if you plot a graph of, rate of reaction against concentration, we are going to find that uh, if this is our graph, this is the rate of reaction. In moles per decimeter per second. Here, it is the concentration of the reactant in moles per decimeter cubed. For this case, we get an equation of this sort. When you plot the rate of reaction against concentration, you get a straight line with zero gradient. So in that case, we deduce that the order of the reaction is zero. But from the integrated equation, from the integrated equation where you have concentration of A, T is equals to concentration of A, not minus kt, we can work on this and we derive another expression. How? This equation can be expressed still as concentration of A at time t is equal to negative kt plus A naught. Meaning that this equation is in the form y is equal to mx plus C, meaning that on the y-axis, we shall have a concentration of A at time T. Our negative K is the gradient, M stands for the gradient. While on the x-axis, we shall have T. On the x-axis, we shall have T. Then our intercept, our y-intercept will be giving us the initial concentration is we shall put concentration of at time t on y axis we shall put our time on x axis then then the slope is negative gradient is negative so the graph of us will be like this 
And then the y-intercept will always give us the initial concentration. How does it happen? If you interpret that, here we are going to have the concentration of A at time t, which is in moles per decimeter cubed. And then here we shall have time in seconds. So on plotting this graph, it will have negative gradient. And you need to know that the intercept here, the intercept gives us the initial concentration from this information. The intercept gives us the initial concentration. Now, the slope here is negative. So by determining the slope, one can easily, uh, by determining the slope, of course, by completing the triangle and you get the gradient, that slope will always be negative. Now, the moment you plot a graph of concentration at time t against time, and you produce a straight line with negative gradient and an intercept on the concentration axis or an intercept on, on y axis, which is concentration axis, then we shall deduce that the order of reaction is zero. More so, the intercept on concentration axis gives us the initial concentration, meaning that the initial concentration will always be obtained from this. In the case you're given information of concentration at time t and time, and you produce such a line of the distance that it is first, or rather it is a zero order. Then the slope, the slope can be obtained from the graph. And after obtaining the slope from the graph, you can easily get your half-life. So here we can easily determine half-life because we can easily get the value of A naught, which is required. And we can easily get uh, the value of K, whereby K, uh, whereby K is the what? K is the slope, which we can easily obtain from there. So as a result, you can easily uh, determine zero order reaction. In my next video, I'm going to record uh, the first order and the second order with their respective graphs after which we see how we apply these graphs to calculate some numbers. Then after that, we look at initial rate method. I will show the best as we wait for our second video to load soon.